you want. Don't mind the glove, but today I'll be showing you guys how to make a vegan pizza. One just completely cheese and tomato and maybe some garlic and herbs. And the other one I'm going to put a meat substitute in it so you guys can have like a meat lovers type or a veggie with meat type of pizza. But if you guys want to know how to make this vegan pizza recipe, just keep on watching. So I'm just going to show you guys what I have. I've boiled some regular potatoes, russet potatoes that I washed yesterday. I've boiled about 10, 9 sorry, so they're all like different sizes. So you can also make this recipe just um, with sweet potatoes or any potato for that matter, cauliflower, potato, whatever you guys want. So you can definitely substitute. The only reason why I'm using the potatoes today is because I've actually pre-boiled them and I don't want them to go to waste. So I'm thinking of making about 2 to 3 pizzas from these. So firstly I'm going to chop up 5 and a half, well fill up, 5 and a half cups of potatoes. This will just be for one pizza base. So I'm thinking of making two pizza bases with this. Um, so I'll be chopping up the whole thing and putting them into two separate bowls. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to chop up your um, potatoes, but I'm going to be using this measuring cup. So I'll fill up five of these and another half. So I'm going to dice them up into small cubes and then fill up this cup over here. So that's one cup. Two cups. Three cups. Four cups. Alright, so I've got my potatoes here. So they're about, this one's four cups, this one's three and a half cups. But that doesn't really matter as long as it has more than enough to sort of bind with the flour, whatever flour you guys are using. So now I'm going to show you guys um, how much to put in each one and then what flour I use and I'll just show you that. Quinoa flour, I got this one from Woolworths but I'm pretty sure you guys can find quinoa flour anywhere in all of the supermarkets. So go out and buy it. There was also coconut which you guys can use and also oat flour, whatever flour you guys would like to use, go ahead and use it but I chose this one so because these were sitting in a in the fridge overnight I'm just gonna go ahead and heat them up for about maybe a minute or two each just so that they're warm because it's better that you combine them while they're warm rather than cold so I'll heat them both up and then I'll add my egg replacer in and for that I will show you guys what I'm using so for that I'm using the no egg egg replacer by Oregon health and nutrition I got this from Woolworths it just recently went into there if you guys don't have this you guys can use two tablespoons of chia seed one tablespoon of water let that sit for a bit so that's your chia seed egg sort of but I found this and I just wanted to give it a go so we're gonna see how we go so I'll be adding one teaspoon which is three grams of egg replacer and two tablespoons of water mix them up and put it through my mixture after heating the two steamed potato batches I've just put my egg replacer in a little container because I'm as you guys can see I'm a bit OCD like that um, but I'm going to add one egg to each one egg to each so I'll grab a little saucepan two of them so I'm just going to use this again so one little teaspoon that's for one egg and then two tablespoons of water so that's going to be one egg replacement I'm just going to put that into one batch of them if you want take it and then repeat the process again so one teaspoon so that's my second egg replacement and I'll add this one to bear. So now we're just going to preheat our oven to 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit and let that heat up. Do not open the stove or whatever it is, the oven door, just let that heat up by itself. And now we're just going to mash our potatoes. that's the type of consistency you guys should have because it doesn't have any butter or milk in it so now I'm going to add one and a half cups of any sort of flour you guys want like I said before I'm using quinoa flour okay so for the first batch that's my one and a half cups of flour and just one tablespoon each of apple cider vinegar one tablespoon each of any oil you guys prefer one teaspoon of dried oregano, one teaspoon of chives, and then just a few dashes of this garlic and herb seasoning. And then also some garlic seasoning to taste. And then lastly, 
a bit of crushed salt. All right, so now I'm gonna stir these up and once that's all stirred up, I'm gonna show you guys the outcome of how it looks like. All right, so I've lined two paper, well not, I've lined two pizza tins with parchment paper, as you guys can see. And I'm just going to spread that mixture onto there with my hand or with a spatula, whatever you guys find more comfortable. Um, and I'll show you guys how to do that. Now the trick to this is to have a bit of oil left over, like me, so you can put it on your hand or your spatula so it just stops it from sticking. Just literally one dot. Here you go, baby. Thanks, Tom. More food. <laughs> And then flatten that down with just your palms or with the back of a spoon, up to you guys. So after your pizza bases are done, you just want to pop them in the oven for 25 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes, until they look like they're done or a bit golden over the top. I'm just going to show you guys the pizzas now. I've eaten half of that one, but that's how they turned out and they're absolutely amazing. And also the food produce that I'll be using is um, basil on top. Then we've got our bio shredded cheese or cheddar cheese. And then I've got some cherry tomatoes, some barbecue sauce, the vegan, and then some pizza sauce that's also vegan, tomatoes, mushrooms, and shallots. And I've also got a red capsicum or bell pepper. I've also just defrosted some of these beef feet free strips that we got from Woolworths, so I'll be using them as well. So now I'll just show you guys how I chop and prep my produce, and then I will get straight into assembling the pizza. Okay, so firstly, chopping board, plenty knife, and something to put your produce on. I'll start off with the capsicum. Your shallots. So my mushrooms are already prepped. I'll go ahead and I'll pop some on my tray. I've already got my cheese prepped over here. So that's my bio cheese. And I just want a few fresh basil leaves. And then just a few cherry tomatoes sliced in half. So that's my cherry tomatoes over there. All right, so now time for assembling my pizza. Okay, so first I'll be going in with my pizza sauce. got that on I'll be going in with my garlic powder garlic and herb powder then I'll be going in with my oregano and then this herb and air seasoning that I have so now time for my toppings a bit of sliced onions then your capsicum and then your mushrooms then go ahead and add your cherry tomatoes and then your chopped shallot and then you can add in your beef strips and then we add in our bio shredded cheese and there you go that's the first pizza so just for this second one i'm going to add pizza sauce some garlic powder and then basically just putting whatever we have left and then just pop in your pizzas in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes Guys, these are my pizzas. I've just tasted a little bit. They're amazing. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys want to know more vegan recipes that I do, they will be upcoming. I am thinking of opening up a separate Instagram for my vegan recipes and my vegan lifestyle journey. But if you definitely want more recipes and videos, leave all the suggestions in the comments down below and I'll be more than happy to record and help you guys out as well. This has been a long journey for me, but that's for another video. Give this video a like, share and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.